The news about AI make us think that this is this inconceivable, very complex thing, whereas for digital pathology, for supervised tissue image analysis models, we actually have to keep it simple. And I'm going to show you how in the Aphoria software. What do I mean by keep it simple? There are publications with models with 18 classes that were developed in a supervised fashion. And I'm telling you to keep it simple. Well, even if the number of classes is so high, they need to be structured in a very simple way because the model we're building does not really do everything at once. It does the things one step at a time and it has to be built in a hierarchical way, in a way where each class of the model or each layer of the model only answers one question. Is it what I'm looking for or not? So let me show you on an image. So here we are in the Aphoria software and we have here our so-called layer tree. What is a layer tree? It is basically a hierarchy of neural networks that take care of this one simple task. Is it what I'm looking for or not? So our first layer here is tissue. And when we look at this image, then the question we're going to be answering here is this tissue or not? And in this particular part of the layer tree, the neural network is going to be doing the job of detecting tissue and non-tissue. So if we wanted to train in a particular region. We have our tissue class switched on and we know where our tissue is. This is all our tissue and we need to be better than that. So let me do it better. Okay, I'm done with my annotation. Why do I need to be so precise? Because in this training region, in the black thing, everything that's outside of my green annotation is my background, my non-tissue thing. Whereas everything that's inside my green annotation is the tissue. I have my question answered. Where is the tissue in the green thing? And where is the non-tissue outside of the green thing? And now the network can learn the appearance of non-tissue and the appearance of tissue. And what do we do next? We want to detect the tumor in the tissue. And here's the clue, in the tissue. That's why in our layer tree, tumor is a child layer. It's lower because we are detecting the tumor in the tissue. There is no point in looking for it outside of the tissue. And we already showed the first layer where the tissue is. And now we will only be looking in the tissue. And what are we going to ask ourselves again when we're in the tissue? Again, a binary question. Is it tumor or is it non-tumor? And this is how we're going to be annotating. So let's switch our tumor layer and see the other layers disappeared because I'm working with a different question now. The other regions are not relevant anymore. So how we're going to treat it right now, we will make another training region and you can appreciate that here is our tumor mass, whereas here is normal lung. We are working with lung tissue. So let's annotate the tumor. Okay, so here's my precise annotation. And within my training region, if part of annotation is outside of this training region, it doesn't matter. But within my training region, there is a division into tumor and non-tumor. But we already know from our layer tree that we look for this division only within tissue. And if we wanted to go deeper and divide it into tumor epithelium and tumor stroma, we would go even lower on our tree. And actually, we would interrogate and ask what's the epithelium, what's the stroma, and the rest. So in this case, we would have two classes within a layer. And if there was something interesting within the epithelium or within the stroma, which, for example, could be tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, then that would be our next layer. So just like that, in a hierarchical manner, asking yourself one binary question at a time, you can build a pretty complex model.